Good morning, everybody. From the backyard, look at this. Not a cloud in the sky today. What a good day. What a good day. It's December 9th, 2020 today, and it's not even that cold. Look at this. My breath isn't even freezing before it hits the ground. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It doesn't get that cold here. But it, it, it is about to get much, much, much colder. But not this week. So good morning. Uh, slept good. Uh, today, uh, we're going to go down to our spot. And uh, my mom and dad are also looking at a lot down there. I don't know how serious they are. Well, they're looking around, sniffing around some land down there. I'm going to go take a look at that piece too and see uh, what it looks like in person. We've uh, taken a look at it on Google Maps and stuff and uh, tried to see what it looks like. But you can't really get a good get a good idea of it until you go see it in person. So I'm going to swing by there today as well. Uh, who knows what else we'll get up to. It's going to be a good day. Glad you're here. No good day starts without Timmy's. True story. So I've been trying to throw them off lately. I haven't been saying super duper. <laughs> Instead, today, I said awesome. And I waited for them to say possum. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I think that one's a little bit of a tougher one. You threw me off. I know, I threw I her off. I was for a loop. I don't know what's going on. Not feeling like myself today. No super duper. Maybe I need my coffee first, then we'll come back around the drive-thru and try again. <laughs> what can I get for you? Nothing, I just wanted to say super duper. I forgot to say it before. Have a great day. You would do that too, wouldn't you? If I wasn't <laughs> in the vehicle, you totally would. <laughs> been a while since we've had the wife mobile at our plot here. Check and make sure everything is still in order. No one has been in or tried to break in. Tires are still inflated. I still need to go and uh, get a piece of board. I'm not too worried about it now, but uh, in summertime especially, these tires need to be covered so that they don't crack and so that these uh we've had problems before with the valve stems leaking yep. there's uh, a lot of land here and my mom and dad were looking at nearby not too sure how serious they are about actually buying it but they just want to come take a look at it it's a very nice piece and it'd be so nice to have them right close by. It would just be a lot of work because uh, they don't have a clearing in theirs yet. So they'd have to clear a spot for the house, clear a spot for the driveway. But it'd be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. All right, so anyways. You jamming out in here? The whole town, or the whole neighborhood, Knows when we're in town during the Christmas season. Christmas! <laughs> Backing up like a true millennial. I'm so glad they put those cameras on these vehicles now. It does help a lot. For those who know how to interpret it <laughs> and view it properly. It's so much easier to get this little car in here than the pickup. Uh, you watch the bushes there. <laughs> Land drive. There we go. All right, a little bit of off-roading. Put some tracks in here so that people know that uh, there is activity here. Good thing we have tank-like winter tires. This vehicle will go through anything. You tried to spin the tires once and it didn't work. It didn't work. No, on ice. It just. It doesn't even have. Uh, it doesn't even have uh, studded tires. It's just got really good winter tires. And they will go through anything.
grain hauling. How many of you are grain haulers? I, I talked to you guys recently about livestock hauling and a lot of you responded to me and I appreciate that. I really do. Today I wanna to ask you about grain hauling. From what I learned from livestock hauling, uh, you're on the go, you're moving a lot. Obviously you have live freight behind you. Literally, it's, it's live. And you gotta get that from point A to point B as quickly as possible with as a little time inside the trailer as possible. It's also could be dangerous loading and unloading them, though I'm pretty sure they would provide proper training to do that. And there's a lot of work for that around here, a lot of livestock. I live out on the prairies, a lot of livestock. But grain hauling, a lot of work with, with that as well. There are a few grain companies here in town. Some of you have said that uh, I should avoid them, and a lot of you have said that they're good companies to work for. Either way, I've heard that there's a lot of downtime hauling grain, uh, but I mean, if it was that bad, they wouldn't be able to find drivers, right? And, and it seems like there's a lot of people still interested in that. I guess it depends what you want to pull. There's so many different avenues to take when you have a, a CDL class one license. You could haul grain, you could haul livestock, you could haul dry freight, you could haul refrigerated freight, you could haul bulk liquid, you could haul uh, fuel, which is the same as bulk liquid, I guess. <laughs> uh, you get all flatbeds and you know I've done I've done a little bit of reefer not much a little bit of reefer but uh, probably not enough to satisfy anyone for uh, experience I'd have to learn a little bit on that I've hauled a lot of dry freight but that's pretty easy you you throw it in the box you close the doors whoo you're good to go I've hauled flatbed now that's where some experience is an asset because I've done that for almost three years and uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. It wasn't too much work like a lot of people say. I enjoyed the physical work. I enjoyed uh, pulling a load down the road. Everyone could see how I tied it down. It gave me a sense of pride pulling that load down the road. But I've never hauled grain or refrigerated freight. Now if I hauled refrigerated freight, I would go to the west coast a whole lot more because that's where most of the you know oranges, apples and fruits come from. Either California and up the west coast all the way to British Columbia. So I'd get to see a lot of different terrain that I've never seen before. There's that option with refrigerated. Grain hauling, you're guaranteed to stay pretty regional because it's not a lot of grain gets shipped all the way across the continent. Some does, but most of it is just from, you know, grain elevator to grain elevator to farm, back to the grain elevator, back to the farm from the field, all this stuff. And that's something that I could feel connected to being from the prairies, hauling grain. It feels like a very prairie guy thing to do, right? And I've, I've been uh, looking into that too. I know the guys here in town. Uh, and, uh, and it seems to be like they got a lot of work. But I wanna hear from you guys. Are any of you grain haulers? Very curious to find out what you know. I need to know the inside scoop, okay? I want to learn everything about all these different industries. I want to be able to share it with you guys. I want to create a video yet about all of the information that you gave me on livestock hauling. I want to I want to create a whole video yet for other people trying to get into this so that they know. We can sort of compile all of our knowledge together so that drivers getting into it have a much better understanding of what they're signing up for. Because you don't the last thing a company wants is to hire a driver who has completely different expectations and then gets into the job and boom, they quit in a week or two, right? That's, nobody wants that. It's a waste of time, a waste of training, a waste of resources for both sides. So we'll see what we can do. Oh, what do you know about grain hauling? I'm very curious. You, you are home pretty pretty often, but uh, is it true that there's a lot of wait times? A lot of wait times? And with e-logs, that would really mess up your day, right? If you're waiting for hours and hours to get loaded and unloaded, I don't know. Tell me your secrets. You know what a dream career of mine would be though? Right here. They're hiding behind a fence. You gotta trust me, they're there. RCMP. To be a cop and a Mountie would be a pretty, pretty awesome career to have, I think. Christmas. So I've got some Christmas wrapping to do here. Uh, Britt's presents came in the mail. 
I would show you what they are, but if I do, then she'll see it too. So you're gonna have to wait, okay? Just trust me. It's a winner. It's winning packages right here. Just look at them. Winners. There's not just this. There's also a box underneath the tree already for her. And uh, another one. Oh, another one over here. Can't forget about this one. I've really got to clean this room up. Really got to do that. There's so many things I have to get done. I keep putting it off, putting it off. Just got to get it done. Okay. There we go. One down. And we officially have gifts for both of us. I don't know who that is. Diesel. Is that your girlfriend? Don't want to talk about it, man. Yeah. She must have dumped him or something. What is my nose smelling over here? Borscht. What kind of borscht? Cabbage borscht. Cabbage borscht. Smells like a Slavic Christmas up in here, ladies and gentlemen. I want you all to lean very close to your monitor right now. It's going to come through the screen. <laughs> Sniff a vision. Wouldn't that be cool? Like that's the next thing, because they've done everything else, right? Like you, we keep asking, how can they make things better? Smell through video. That's gonna backfire on a lot of people though. <laughs> but not on you. Look at this. We've been thinking about uh, showcasing Brit's recipes. Possibly, maybe, on her channel. There has been some requests. If you guys would like to see that, let us know down below in the comment section. Uh, her channel is called Brit's Beat. And uh, we haven't posted anything on there in a long time. But a lot of people have been asking for her recipes because she is an amazing, amazing cook and chef. And I'm not just saying that. Uh, I'm not just saying that because she's my wife either. She, I actually look forward to eating at home. I mean, I haven't eaten this good in like nine years. It's been great. This is like living back at home with mom again. Honey, you've been moved out of the house for 12 years. I know. 14. 14. 14? I moved out when I was 18. I'm 32 now. I haven't eaten this good since I lived at home. Nine years. Try to make yourself younger, are you? <laughs> hey. Hey. You got any stories? Why don't you ever tell your stories to the camera? Are you ignoring your dad? He's the commander of the Galactic Federation, apparently. Yeah, he spews a lot of nonsense. We're on to you. We know you're here now. Is it true? Nobody knows I'm a shapeshifter. So there wasn't really much going on today, but tomorrow will be a little bit more of a full day. I've got some more plans for tomorrow, but thanks for watching today anyways. I really do appreciate it. A little bit of a short vlog. Let me know, all you grain haulers out there, pros and cons down below in the comment section. Tell me all about it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. See you later, everybody.